they were important, but they weren't major. To cut back, we cut back a little bit. But if you look at the votes, we had a lot of amendments. Uh, there were 700 filed. I don't know how many we voted on. But uh, some of them we couldn't get more than 100 votes on. There was one, I think it was around $100 million to cut infrastructure building in Iraq. And we got 100 votes. You know, we, we can't even take care of ourselves at home, and we're worried about building bridges over in Iraq. Now, if you want to identify, if you want to identify earmark, I'd say let's go after those kind of earmarks and spend that money here at home. Woo! But another responsibility of the federal government, they're supposed to protect our borders. But we're around the world. We're around the world trying to establish borders and remake the Middle East and do all these things, and yet our own borders aren't protected. So if we had a proper functioning federal government, we would deal, be dealing with our own borders here and enforcing our own laws, and we're in a lot less love with our own borders. The crisis that we face now is a crisis, uh, it, it, it's going to be demonstrated, it's going to come about as a financial crisis. We've had a financial crisis of sort, but it's only beginning because they've been able to prop it up to a degree. They have been able to once again put in the money to bail out the guys that have been making the law, bail out the banks and the big corporations, bail out the military industrial complex, and who got stuck with the bad stuff? The people got stuck with buying up all those worthless assets. And now the consequence of us buying up and paying for worthless assets with funny money, the consequence is now inflation. Anybody in this room remembers the 70s? They were, it was a bad decade. It was the consequence of the breakdown of Red Woods when I got involved in politics. Well, the 70s were bad. They called it stagflation. Prices were going up and the economy was hardly growing and growing at all. But today, the economy really isn't growing. If the economy was growing in the true sense of the word, we wouldn't have this huge unemployed group of people out there. Our government tells us it's 9%, 9.5% or whatever. What a joke! You know what? If you count everybody, like some free market people do, it's 22% of the people that are unemployed. And uh, under these conditions, much worse than the 70s, under these conditions you have this market deflationary force trying to say, back off, liquidate debt, cut the spending, balance the budget. You have the government doing exactly the opposite. Spend more, build more houses, keep prices high, never let labor costs go down. So they're coming into conflict. They're coming into conflict under much uh, worse circumstances. And we're going to get hit with two things, and I believe we've started already. There will be two things that will be the tax that will be more vicious than what you have to send in to the IRS. One will be the, uh, the inflation tax that, that you have to, uh, have to pay, and the, uh, the other tax will, will just be the burden of big government. You're going to have to pay, and when, one way you will have to pay is, in spite of this horrendous power the Federal Reserve has, to have manipulated interest rates lower than they should have been for so long, what happens is interest rates are going to go up and they won't be able to control them. The interest rates have already just started to go up. So the people, once again, will be hit with higher interest rates and higher inflation and a weak economy. And if you think people are upset now, they're really going to get upset. They're upset in Wisconsin, but they're upset in a lot of other states. They're upset around the world, and it's all related. People, you know, we'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and they're fighting for their liberties and, and free elections and all. But you know what? A lot of them are fighting and angry and upset. They've tolerated dictators for four years. Why are they all of a sudden upset? Food prices are going up. Their, their jobs aren't there. I've often said half kiddingly that, uh, uh, you know, when some people say you vote from your heart and, or you vote from your head, I think most people vote from their bellies. Woo! And when your belly's empty, you get angry and upset. And that's what's happening in the world. And we see no signs that true economic growth is coming. The people in Washington now believe economic growth comes from government spending and printing press money and passing out money. 
And all that does is, to, is get people to spend money, live beyond their means, and then it comes out uh, with the inflation. Unless a country depends on hard work and effort, saving with a sound economy and then investment, you have to have production. But because we have been doing it the wrong way for 30 some years, guess what? We had jobs leave this country. So we have lived off the benefits of being the reserve currency of the world issuer. We've been issuing the paper money and everybody has taken it. But they're not going to take it much longer. There's not an easy option with the other currencies. Just to go and buy Euro, euros or yen is not the solution because we in the last 40 years have orchestrated a worldwide inflation based on the dollar. So what will happen is all the currencies will go down in value, prices are going up, and that's what's happening overseas. So in the next week, in the weeks to come, you're going to hear a lot about energy prices going up because of other reasons than the Federal Reserve. But they did that in the 70s. It was always the embargoes that caused the interest rates to go up. But it was, they were going up because the dollar was going down. It's just the excuse to do it, to raise, to raise the prices. So when this comes, you especially, because you have engaged in this debate, and you're, I wish I could say you were the majority, but we are still the minority. But remember, an irate minority can accomplish a whole lot when you're determined to do it. That's right, Ron! Woo! You have, to know, you have to know what the alternative will be. The Constitution is a good place to start. Sound money is another place. Balance the budget by cutting spending. Reject the notion of the empire. Reject the notion that we need the Patriot to make us safe. Reject the idea that we have to take care of everybody. Believe in liberty. That is the qualifier. If we believe in ourselves and in liberty, we have lost our confidence in it. And liberty has to be restored. A hundred years ago, we as a country took liberty and chopped it into pieces. We talked about personal liberty and economic liberty and then a foreign policy all over the place. It's all one piece. Your personal liberty, your economic liberty is the same liberty that gives you your right to practice your religion and lead your life as you so choose. It's all one piece. We want, it, we want a free society because it releases creative energy. That's what we need. We need the government to deal with the general welfare, but it isn't redistributing wealth. The general welfare means sound money and, and private properties, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the whole works. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But liberty is the, the instrument that allows us to strive. You know, when government strives to make us better people and make the world better, it doesn't work. They do it at the expense of liberty. Today, it's the release of that wow.